Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. We're here today with Michelle Fabrica, our love coach, and my partner, John Coleman. How are you doing, folks? Hey, Michelle. Good to see you again. Thanks. Great to be here. Uh, now, Michelle, you know that Art and I have uh, each been married for over 50 years. Not to each other, in case anybody's asking. <laughs> Um, but uh, you have been married and then divorced, if I am correct, and are were single for a while and are now in a committed relationship. But it strikes me that a lot of people are single by choice, not just as an interim between you know marriages or relationships, but they're sing they like singlehood. They just don't want to partner up with anybody is that is that am i am i correct about that it's becoming more common uh yeah i think you're right about that and i think also there's a way to regardless of whether you want that or not whether you want to be single or not to enjoy being single so i kind of want to because I, basically our culture it tends to put you know put pressure on people you tend to think like Oh, why aren't you, you know, married? Or why are are you going to get married again? Or are you dating anybody now? Like after a divorce, or you've been widowed, or something? It's, people feel pressure, and I just think that it's unfortunate that that people are judged for being single. And it's a totally delicious and wonderful way to be living your life is to have your own freedom and your own choices. And so, even though I'm a love and relationship coach, I certainly support people who are looking to enjoy being single. And what is that like? How do you make that happen for yourself, right? Yeah, and it, it seems to me that it's less a matter of whether you're single or not single, and more a matter of whether you're happy as you are. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, you know, there can be the rush to, you know, we might not like being alone at first, and there might be the rush to, partner up, but then we might settle for a relationship that isn't really working for us or isn't quite right. So, um, you know, if you, if you've been in a lot of, if you've been in relationships most of your life, it's actually can be quite a delightful experience to enjoy, you know, it might take some getting used to, but it can be a great place to kind of reset and to discover what you really, what really matters to you and how you want to maybe be changing the, what you do or how you spend your time. Um, I, I read something an expert talked about that relationships are really mentally expensive. <laughs> 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 that intimacy and partnership, it takes up a lot of room, right? In our heads, we're thinking, sure. oh, our, you know, we might get upset about our partner doing this or that. Or we might get hung up on, you know, like petty fights we might be having and the irritations, which granted doesn't have to be true. There are ways to clear that from even if you're having those thoughts a lot in your relationship, it doesn't mean your relationship isn't good. It just means that, Maybe you need to do some work on, you know, releasing some of these ruminations that might be happening. However, if you're single, you can just, you know, enjoy the spaciousness of that. We're kind of free from that clutter. And you can deepen your relationship with yourself. You can really get to know yourself and, um, you know, what, what your dreams are, what your values are. If you want to travel, take classes, you know, whatever. And, and of course, all these things can be done when you're in a relationship, but somehow we don't always give ourselves as much permission, and um, which is unfortunate, actually. But like I said, being single gives you that freedom, and you really develop really more self-confidence and self-reliance because you got to rely on yourself. And that, you know, we rise to the occasion often when we, we have those situations. And obviously, we can get support from others, but we can... We can do a lot on our own. We can enjoy yeah. life that way. So your message is that um, uh, for a lot of your clients and uh, through your observations that uh, if, if people want to remain single, even if they have friendships and, and very deep, intimate relationships, that uh, maybe you could be at a point in your life where you just don't, maybe, maybe you had a wonderful relationship, and but you grew up with all sorts of compromises, and but you like to sleep on one side of the bed, and that other person that you were with for a long time was on the other side and everybody got used to it. And now both people want to be on the same side of the bed. <laughs> so it's okay not to want to make those compromises. You could, but it, but it's okay for a lot of your clients 
uh, to not make those compromises and to be uh, enjoy being single, not feel guilty about it that they're missing out on something. Yeah, I mean, it's all a trade-off, right? Because there's a lot of experiences we can have on our own that we can't have with a partner and um, decisions we can make and you can be more spontaneous. We don't have to check in with anybody about these kinds of things. And um, so, and I mean, the main message too is that to not kind of hold back from what you think a happy life can be. How do you, how can you make yourself, even if you don't want to be single, let's say, but might as well enjoy it anyway, right? How do you make that happen so that it's not something that you're just, you know, trying to find a partner because then you're not even, you know, a happy, happily single person is more likely to find a partner. Let's, let's face it, right? You were more attractive when we're happy. And, and it's, you know, a relationship isn't the be all end all of life. I mean, you got to really be enjoying yourself as well. And, um, it's, it, yeah. So that's, it's, it's an essential kind of way of being in the world and we might as well embrace it and enjoy it. Uh, Michelle, do you suppose that, um, it's, this attitude is different for people at different ages, for instance, celebrating Actula. Obviously, we're talking about the second half of your life. So people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, do they have different issues with being single? Um, yeah, I, I think they do. I think that, you know, um, you know, sometimes it's about making sure you still have community in your life. You really do want to make sure that there are people in your life that, you know, friends and, um, you know, maybe you need to find, if you're newly single, you might want to find some more single friends, but, but don't ditch your married friends either. You know, it's good to stay connected to people in all kinds of circumstances and all ages really. So, um, but I think, yeah, it is different when we're older. I think that we might not be in, you know, obviously when you're going through school or in a, in a, you know, career, whatever, of course, people in uh, act two are also in careers as well, but so there, there always are different circumstances, but the main thing is they're different. We're all different on some level. And then of course, in some ways we're all the same. So I would say, you know, community and, you know, we don't, it's important. We don't want to be isolated because, um, and disconnection that can lead to, you know, more anxiety and, and depression. So we want to make sure we have some connection with others. And yet it's also great to cultivate how can I enjoy my own company and what's important for me? Sure. So yeah. being single, being single doesn't mean that you don't have relationships. Exactly. It means you don't have a partner. Uh, right. But, right. But, yeah. but according to Michelle Fabrica, uh, committed relationships are great. Living together is great. Living apart is great with a new relationship. Okay. But the single life could be a happy life. And it's okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you don't have to have a sex life either, right? Right. We can, oh, be, yeah. you know, I'm sorry, so John. I'm sorry, John. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's great to be enjoying pleasure in yourself. You know, solo sex, determine what you like. There, there are toys and tools and things out there, orgasm tools out there for. So definitely it's something to um, really enjoy and um, cultivate what brings you happiness, what you sure. want to learn, how you want to grow. So it can be a really fertile time in one's yeah. life and um, enjoy, encourage people to find a way to uh, enjoy it or get support if they need that to help them enjoy it. Good, good point, good point. Well, thank you, Michelle, as always, uh, for uh, shining a light on issues that uh, are important to a lot of people, but oftentimes are not spoken, uh, or uh, people are embarrassed to speak about them. But we know that you're not, uh, sure. because that's your business: is uh, helping people work through all sorts of ways to have a successful relationship with yourself and others. So thank you for that. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.